Thank you, Mustafa, for the introduction, and thank you all for attending this presentation. Uh, in this talk, I'm going to present our work on uh, unmanned aerial vehicles and their applications in wireless networks. Uh, so unmanned aerial vehicles, which are also known as uh, UAVs or drones, can have many applications in wireless networks. For instance, uh, drones can be used as aerial based station to enhance the capacity, coverage, and energy efficiency of wireless networks. And also, they can be used as relay and even uh, flying users. Uh, but uh, to effectively use these drones in wireless networks, we need to address many technical challenges and fundamental problems. Now, with this in mind, the main goal of my research is to provide analytical framework and efficient algorithms that can be used to analyze, optimize, and design drone-based communication systems. So first, uh, we're going to have an introduction to unmanned aerial vehicles, opportunities, challenges, and I'm going to talk a little bit about deployment. After that, uh, I'm going to present two of our recent works. The first one is UAV communication under flight time uh, considerations. And the second one is the application of UAVs in Internet of Things communication. So UAVs uh, can be like a small aircraft, balloon, or drones. They can be remotely controlled or pre-programmed. They have many applications in military, surveillance, search and rescue, localization, and telecommunications. And here, I'm going to focus on the use case of UAVs for communication and wireless networks. Uh, UAVs can be classified uh, based on their altitude uh, or their type. Based on altitude, we can have high altitude platform, HAP, and uh, low altitude platform, LAP. So HAP uh, usually deploy, is deployed uh, above 17 kilometers. They're more costly, but uh, they, they can uh, fly for longer time. Uh, low altitude platform uh, from few uh, meter, uh, few hundred meters to few kilometers. The good thing about them is that they can be quickly deployed. Uh, so they're more appropriate for, uh, for temporary event scenarios. Uh, we can also uh, have fixed wing UAVs and uh, rotary wing UAVs. The difference is that in fixed wing UAVs, fixed wing UAVs are more capable. They, ha they can carry, uh, so they can fly for longer time because they're more capable. But the problem is that they cannot uh, stay stationary. So they need to move in order to remain aloft in there. On the other side, we have rotary wing UAV, which can fly uh, for short and shorter time duration. But the main advantage of them is that they can Hover and by hover we mean that they can stay stationary in the air and provide wireless service for ground. So they can remain stationary. So they can hover. And uh, the application of uh, so the use use of these UAVs depends on the application that we want and the scenario. Uh, so drones as aerial base station uh, or users, uh, they can be used for any emergency situations. Uh, such as, uh, for example, when we have earthquake or flood, that uh, terrestrial networks are not fully, fully operational, uh, and we don't have uh, operational uh, ground-based station. In such case, drones can act as aerial-based station to provide temporary connectivity and coverage for ground users. In some uh, Temporary events such as festival or Olympic games that there is a need for uh, high data rate communications, uh, drones can be also deployed to provide high capacity service for users. An example of these is like LTE drone, AT&T, and Absolute Project in Europe. So they're working on deploying uh, aerial base stations. Uh, drones can also be used for uh, data collection from uh, ground users or sensors. Uh, as a user, uh, drones can be used uh, for delivery purposes, such as Amazon. Uh, they can also be used for uh, providing global connectivity. An example of this is uh, Google and Facebook. They're trying to use uh, these uh, high altitude platform drones to provide global internet co connectivity 
especially for areas that, were, that are poorly covered by terrestrial networks. <laughs> But what are the key advantage and feature of the UAVs that uh, we are interested in and it's going to help us to deploy them in an efficient way? The first one is the high uh, the line of sight communication link. Because they're high altitude compared to terrestrial networks, uh, they can uh, easily establish line of sight communication to ground. Uh, they have adaptive altitude, so by changing the altitude, we can reduce the blockage and provide uh, better communication to ground. And of course, potential mobility so they can move. And uh, by only using a few drones, we can, uh, and taking advantage of their mobility, we can provide service for a large geographical area. Uh, and they, are, they have simple infrastructure, so low cost and rapid deployment. We can quickly deploy them. So these are the uh, key advantage of drones. Uh, but despite their advantage and application, uh, there are many challenges and new challenges that we need to deal with. The first one is uh, optimal 3D deployment. So what's the best way to uh, place these drones uh, such that they can provide the maximum uh, service or, that, or so that they can maximize the system performance? Uh, how they should move, uh, past planning or trajectory optimization, we need to deal with. Uh, channel modeling, air to ground channel modeling is an important issue. So, uh, what, because channel modeling uh, affects all of the analyzers, so it's very important to have a very reliable channel modeling for air to ground communication. That's also an, a technical problem here. So, what's the best uh, channel modeling for air to ground communication? Uh, we also need to do performance analysis in order to, do, in order to get some uh, uh, design uh, insights. Resource management and interference management also important. Uh, and the other thing is, uh, is that drones have limited amount of battery, so they cannot fill up for long, long term. So that's uh, one of the main drawbacks of these drones compared to terrestrial networks. So in terrestrial networks, we have enough power and energy mobile for drones. We don't have lots of available energy. So uh, while using these drones, we need to take into consideration the energy constraint of them. Yes? Are there solar powered UAVs? Uh, there are, yeah. So for example, Facebook is trying to use solar power, somehow energy harvesting, uh, to power the drones. Uh, but the question is like how much they can get from energy harvesting or solar power. It, it, would it be enough or uh, do we need something on top of that to... So yes, well, so to answer your question, yes, there are solar power duties. Yes. As drones, you said that we could move the altitude, right? Does yes. the channel model significantly change with... Yes, yes, definitely. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that. So, to... so the key problems that we need to study is three placement, trajectory optimization, flight time optimization, and power control. We need to do performance analysis, considering the key feature of the UAV, such as their flexibility and mobility. And also, we need to analyze the coexistence of aerial network with terrestrial networks. So we may have terrestrial networks, and if we want to deploy these aerial networks, uh, we need to uh, analyze the performance of such network and uh, highlight the key trade-offs here. To do so, we need some mathematical tools, such as optimization theory, uh, stochastic geometry for performance analysis, transport theory, and control theory in order to control the drones. So these are some mathematical tools that we need to use in order to analyze and optimize the drone communication systems. So uh, one uh, commonly used uh, air-to-ground uh, pass-loss model is based on probabilistic line of and non of settling. So this is just pass-loss model. It doesn't take into consideration the shadowing or uh, or a small scale fading. So this is basically the pass loss model for air to ground. So it's based on probabilistic line of non-offset link, which means that 
given the location of uh, drones and uh, users on the ground, uh, we will have a line of sight link with a certain probability and non line of sight link with a certain probability. And for line of sight and non line of sight link, uh, we consider different uh, uh, pass loss. So obviously, if you have non line of sight, we will have more uh, attenuation. And for, for line of sight, less attenuation compared to non line of sight. But this line of sight probability clearly depends on several factors, such as environment, which environment were deploying these, in which environment were deploying these UAVs, and uh, height and density of the building. So if you have many buildings, tall buildings, it affects the line of sight probability. Again, line of sight probability, probability that uh, a drone has line of sight view to a ground users. Uh, and of course, depends on the location of the drones and uh, ground user. So clearly, if we go up, we get more line of sight. So if we have a line of sight approximation. Uh, so there is a, this is a common uh, model for line of sight probability, uh, which says the line of sight probability can be approximated by this function which depends on theta. Theta is elevation angle between uh, drone and ground users. So 90 degree means the most probably we will have line of sight, almost surely we have line of sight. And depends on these parameters, C and B, which are constant, which depends on uh, environment. So for different environments, we will have different uh, constant values, such as C and B. Uh, and theta depends on the elevation angle. Yes? Shouldn't the altitude be somewhere here? Altitude? Yeah. So uh, here, the elevation angle somehow has an uh, altitude in itself because elevation angle is uh, tangent of uh, altitude, tangent inverse of altitude divided by this horizontal distance, right? Right. So let's say we have for. Let's say we have this one, for example. Let's, let's say this is an elevation angle. So this is equal to this altitude, is related to this altitude divided by this, right? So it has uh, altitude. And also, it's not only dependent on altitude. It's also dependent on, the, dependent on the distance, right? So if we go up, we will uh, increase the, uh, the elevation angle. So the line of that probability will increase. Yes. Is this a constant speed depending on the environment? Are they computed as a, are they empirically known constants based on real time simulations and tests? Or is it uh, based on some theoretical modeling of uh, unknown environments? Uh, I've seen that they find this, they found this by doing ray tracing simulations. So they first model the buildings, and buildings can be modeled, the, the height of the buildings can be modeled by a Rayleigh distribution. So they say the height of the building is Rayleigh distribution. So, so they generate these buildings, and for different environments, the density will be different, the height will be different. And then they do ray tracing simulation, and then they do curve fitting, and this is just an approximation. So it's nothing like completely true. So it's just a good approximation, which uh, has the impact of both environment as well as uh, altitude and location. So it captures those. Uh, and this is uh, the plot for line of set probability for different environments as a function of elevation angle. As we expected, uh, by increasing elevation angle, we will get higher line of set link probability. So uh, here there is an interesting trade-off uh, that uh, significantly affects the deployment. So we can do deployment in a smart way by considering this trade-off. It says that for higher altitude, uh, the good thing is that we get line of sight pro high line of sight probability, right? So because higher elevation angle. But uh, the bad thing is bad thing is that. Uh, we are increasing the distance to the ground user. So we are increasing the distance, so somehow pass loss is increasing. So while the line, you, you, we, we're going to get more line of sight, we are increasing the distance, so a more pass loss in that sense. 
While if we decrease the altitude, uh, we are getting closer to the ground, which is good, but uh, we, most probably we get none of satellite. So here, clearly, there's an interesting trade-off. And uh, based on that, we can somehow find uh, an optimal altitude for drones that maximizes, for example, the coverage performance. So here, it says that, for example, in 500 meters, so I didn't put the detail on how I, I computed. This is just a, a representative result to see such optimal altitude exists. Uh, so for lower altitude, uh, somehow we, we're going to have uh, more non-line of, non of sight, which decreases the performance. And for very l l high altitude, like above 500 uh, meters, uh, the distance is too large. So uh, again, that uh, reduces the coverage performance. In a special case, if you go to infinity, you get no coverage. Like here, above, let's say, uh, 1,300 meters, we almost get no coverage because we're too far from the ground. So that's. So for the simulation, did you use multiple drones or like single drones? Uh, so this is just for single drones, but of course multiple drones also impact in a sense that it, the, if we are considering interference, it impacts. So. But for single drones, it's much easier to derive the optimal altitude analytically. But if you have multiple drones, uh, you're right. That the optimal altitude affects, will be affected. Because it is one by something exponential, is it probably convex or concave? Uh, yes, yes. So based on this model, uh, we need to deal with the convex I would say optimization or concave or whatever. Uh, but it's, this is based on that line of set probability model. So if that changes, something, someone come up with better model, this may not be true. And this can be considered for other analyzers. So, so this shows that altitude is very important. It affects everything because it's affecting channel model. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the first one, which is UAV communication under hover time constraint. So as we discussed, uh, the flight time of the drones is limited due to their energy limitations. Now under this constraint, uh, how can we optimize the performance of the system? So the model that we're considering here is that we have multiple uh, UAVs, they're static and we have an area which, in which users are spatially distributed based on probability distribution function f, x, and y, which somehow says how likely a user is located at point x and y. So we have only a spatial distribution. So we have m UAVs, and we need, uh, 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 and the hover time of the UAVs is shown by tau i. So hover time is the maximum time that UAV can fly. And that can be determined based on the energy uh, budget of these drones. So for example, we say each drone can uh, hover or fly uh, at most, for example, one hour, based on their energy constraint. So I'm assuming that tau i is given. So now the main goal is to find optimal cell partition at, and associations that leads to the maximum data service under some fairness constraint. So this means that we are trying to somehow optimally partition this uh, given area based on the distribution of the users as well as uh, the flight time of the, as well as hover time of drones, such that they can provide a maximum data service. And by data service, we mean the number of bits that they can uh, transmit to ground users. So we are considering downlink. So we are considering downlink. This UAV is going to provide transmit data to ground users. And our goal is to maximize the total data service that they can provide to ground users under some fairness constraint, which I'm going to talk about later. So if we don't consider fairness, users uh, which are uh, uh, so so some area with a high density of the users will get nothing because the, there, there are too many users if you don't consider the fairness so that's why the fairness is important 
uh, so let's say the total bank width of UAV i is bi and the hover time is tau i ti is the effective uh, data transmission time which i'm simply ca considering uh, some uh, control time which uh, you need to spend for computation or uh, or signaling uh, and i'm uh, considering the effective data transmission by ti so ti is somehow the hover the total hover time the maximum hover time but uh, I take out the processing time and some additional time. And so the number of bits that uh, UAVI can transmit to the user located at location X and Y is TI, WI, bandwidth, multiplied by this log function, which uh, is a function of SINR. And WI is the amount of bandwidth that the, uh, the user receives, which depends on the number of users in the area. Right? So BI is the total bandwidth divided by N multiplied by this integration. This gives me the average number of users within the area of the coverage area of the drones. Drone, drone I. Uh, what is uh, N is the total number of users. So N multiplied by this integration gives me the average number of users within the area AI. So area AI is the area that partition that is assigned to UAVI. So UAVI is responsible for providing coverage for users within the area AI. And of course, this depends on the distribution of the users. So, so some parts with um, higher density means that more users. So each user will get uh, less bandwidth. So this, I'm also considering this fairness constraint, which says that, uh, or this resource allocation factor, which says that uh, what should be the uh, relationship between the resources that users are receiving. So here, because of the hover time constraint, the, our resources uh, is both uh, bandwidth and also uh, the hover time. Right, so both are, uh, are considered as resources. Because if you don't have any hover time and you have infinite bandwidth, it, it's not going to help you. What, what's going to help you is the multiplication of both. So this, somehow, with this, we can control the shape and number of uh, users within each cell partition to ensure some level of fairness. So in general, our optimization problem can be formulated as this. So integration of these, uh, and the unknowns are cell partitions. So we need to find the shape of these partitions in an optimal way that maximizes the total average data service. So this function gives me the mm, total number of bits that are transmitted to ground users. Under this fairness constraint, which is a function of bandwidth and hover time, as well as that resource allocation factor that we control. So alpha i and alpha j, is, uh, it's a design parameter that we control. So if in a special case, you can consider both are equal, so all the users will get equal, on average, equal amount of resources, so for example. But you can control that. So if you are caring more about some users in a particular area, maybe you can give more weight to them. So. So with this, you can control the average amount of uh, resources that you can give to users. And here it says that this partition should be separated, and their union should be the entire geographical area. So this is challenging because first, this constraint. So somehow we need to control the shape and uh, shape of these uh, uh, cell partitions. At the same time, we need to maximize the total performance. Now, to solve this problem, we use uh, optimal transport theory, which uh, goes back to this problem that what is the best way to move uh, piles of sands to fill up holes with the same, amount, same volume? So by best way, we mean each uh, pile should go to which location? So is it better, for example, to move this 
to here or no, it's better to move this here, here to here. So H should go where? So that's the question. Uh, such that the total transportation cost is minimized. So there is a cost associated with moving something from point X to point Y. Right, so the goal is to minimize this total transportation cost, so we uh, fill, fill up all the holes uh, with minimum transportation cost. So that's the goal. Uh, and in our problem, this is somehow related to this, that uh, transporting users to UAVs. So we have some UAVs, and we need to assign or transport these uh, ground users to UAVs. So somehow this is a link between these two problems. So link between cell partitioning association with transportation. And here the goal is to, uh, our goal is to maximize the total data service. Here is the goal is to minimize the cost. So minimizing cost and maximizing the data service are related. So we can easily relate them together by negative. Yeah, sure. So you assume that you know the locations of the UAVs. Yes, and it's fixed. And one interesting problem is to jointly optimize them, but this is going to be very difficult. Uh, and especially ensuring the global optimality is going to be, again, difficult. So here I'm assuming the location is fixed based on some, some criteria, and it's based on long-term deployment. So if you see that, for example, all the users are moving, so moving to other location, it's possible to again move the UAVs there, but again you need to do this cell association problem. So this cell association problem is for a given location of UAVs. So if you want to update the location of UAV, you can do it, but again you need to redo the cell association. So you also assume the user locations are... Yes, I'm assuming that the information that I have is that with which probability a user is located at point X and Y. I'm assuming that information I have, some statistical information I have. So mathematically, it goes to Munch counter which uh, transportation pro transport problem, which says that given two distribution, what's the optimal mapping between these two, so, so such that mu can be mapped to uh, v within a minimum transportation cost. Uh, and T is the mapping between uh, point X uh, to Y. So somehow T of X gives me the destination of point X. And our goal is to find TX. So TX tells me that each point should go to each destination. So the mapping between source to destination, such that this function, which gives me the total transportation cost, C, X, and Y, is the cost of moving X to Y, point X to point Y such that this is minimized. So that was the main, uh, the original problem, transportation problem. So back to our problem, we can con uh, model our problem as a semi-discrete optimal transport problem. And by semi-discrete, we mean that uh, one distribution is uh, discrete, the other one is continuous. So here we have continuous distribution of users, which we need to somehow map to discrete UAVs. So that's why we call it semi-discrete optimal transport problem. And it can be shown that these optimal, these cell partitions that we were looking for is related to optimal transport map. So somehow, if I, if I tell you uh, this is the map, and by map we mean that you, you, you're going to tell me that each point should go, go to which location, in, in total, I can find the cell partitions, right? So if I know that each point is going to go where, then in total I can figure out what are the cell partitions. So cell partition is related to transport maps. So if I know the transport map, in fact, I know the uh, cell partitions. And they're related by this. It's simple. And this tells me the, uh, tells me that so by this, we need to control the shape and number of, in fact, by this, we are controlling the number of the users uh, within each cell partition. So by this, we can somehow, uh, we won't let some uh, partitions to be too crowded, for example. 
to avoid unfair service. So if some of the partitions are too crowded, UAV has limited amount of time and bandwidth, and you're going to serve the users. So if uh, a partition has 100 users, the other partition has two users, then it's not a fair. So these 100 users get nothing. Each get nothing. So these areas might be disjoint. Sorry? So these areas might be disjointed. These, uh, A, uh, so you mean for each AI? So yeah. AI and AJ are for sure disjoint. And even AI itself can be disjoint. Even AI itself can be disjoint. But AI just means that users located in AI, which AI itself could be too disjoint, but in total I'm considering as AI. Both of them are, are going to be served by, the, by UAVI. Do you have any insight on given an area whether it will be convergence? The set? Uh, not, not be. And I'm going to show. I mean, I've, I've seen through the, like, the results that uh, some partition may not be convex. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this is a connection between transport map and cell partition, which means if I can find the transport map, we're going to get the, the cell partitions. And there is a th another term called Kantorovich duality um, theorem, which says that that complex problem, the finding optimum transport map, can be transformed to an easier problem and more tractable problem as this. So we can, using this duality theorem, we can transform a more complex problem to a more tractable problem, which instead of finding those transport map or uh, complex cell partitions, we can find these values, psi i. So we, we, we need to find only a finite number of unknowns. So it can be transformed to this problem. Of course, the objective function will going to change uh, accordingly, but uh, this is much easier to solve and deal with. And again, it can be shown that finding this psi i leads to optimal transport map and cell partitions. So if I can find this psi i, I can find cell partitions. And the good thing, and this is a function of uh, the data service. And data service is related to cost function. Right. So maximizing data service is equivalent to maximizing negative of cost function in transport, for example. They're related. And it can be shown that this is a convex function of psi i. So because it's convex, it's tractable, we can uh, use gradient-based methods to find unknowns which are psi i. And having psi i, we can put in this equation or inequality and find the optimal cell partitions. So cell partition i is the all points in the area uh, that satisfy this inequality. In a special case, if these two are equal, this leads to weighted Voronoi diagram. For example, it says that just connect to the uh, closest, for example, UAV. So weighted Voronoi diagram is a special case of this. For example, if we don't have any fairness constraint, which somehow means that these are going to be equal or zero, so this just tells me that just connect to the closer, which makes sense, because if you connect to the closer one, you get uh, higher SINR. Assume that we are not considering fairness. And the total service performance is maximum for sure, because you are connecting to the closest, or the one that providing uh, a stronger signal, a stronger SINR, I would say. So while computing SINR, you, you consider the dollar that you have Yes, I'm assuming that all of the UAVs are interfered. But in case of no interference, also works. So that's not a big thing. So it won't change the scenario a lot. So this is just one example. We are considering a, a truncated Gaussian distribution for ground users. So this shows the distribution of the users. This is somehow now becomes a hot spot. And the non density of user decreases as we move away from this spot. So the darker means uh, higher density of the users. So this uh, 
if we use weighted Voronoi, we're gonna get the right figure. If we use this approach, we're gonna get this shape. It's, the difference is that, for example, in this, user located here, they won't get lots of service because they're too dense. There are too many users here. So that's why this partition is gonna shrink. So less people are here. And this partition is gonna expand, gonna be like this. So that we somehow, so somehow we are adjusting the cell shapes so that the number of so, uh, users within each cell partition can be controlled in a way that the total service performance is maximized. So we are not doing randomly. So one may say, OK, just increase this randomly. But this randomly is not going to work because uh, our goal is to also maximize the service performance. So what's the best way to expand this while considering the sum, uh, considering the total service performance also? We need to do it in an optimal way. And this shows that, for example, in a special case that I'm assuming that this resource allocation factor that I talk about are equal. So the average number of users within uh, cells are equal. So in our approach, on average, we will have equal number of users per cells. So cell one and cell two, and on average, they have the same amount of uh, users. And that's why they receive a fair resources, fair amount of resources. And these, if we do weighted Voronoi, some cells are going to be extremely crowded. So for example, the cell, in cell number three going to be like 80 users. This one going to be 35. So some unbalanced. Uh, cells we will have. So that affects the fairness also performance. And by sigma zero, we mean the distribution. Sigma is a standard deviation of Gaussian distribution. As sigma zero increases, uh, it's going to be more uh, close to uniform distribution. When we have uh, less, lower this means users are more non-uniform, they're more concentrated. In that case, we're going to have a, a more fairness problem, actually. So the fairness is going to be lower. That's why you see here, when we have lower amount of sigma 0, the fairness value, which is this James factor somehow represents the fairness factor, uh, which is uh, much lower than the case that we have more units. Now, quickly, I'm going to talk about uh, the second work, which is related to the use of UAVs for energy-efficient Internet of Things communication. Here, we have a number of battery-limited IoT devices. And main, one of the big challenges in IoT network is their energy constraint. So we always need to uh, try to maximize their energy efficiency or, in fact, minimize their energy consumption. And uh, one way to do that, in our model, we are using these drones that can be flexibly deployed. It can dynamically move towards the uh, ground IoT devices and collect their data. So without drones, for example, these IoT devices need to transmit to closest ground-based station, in, which first might be far. Second, mm, the channel may, may not be in a good condition. So uh, their signal may be blocked. So that's why they may need to use higher transmit power. This means that more energy consumption. So, but by drones, we can flexibly deploy in an optimal location. Uh, they can get close to the drone, to the IoT devices, and collect their data. And this means that these uh, uh, IoT devices need to transmit with significantly lower transmit power, because they have a better channel condition. Uh, so now the, the goal is to minimize the total power consumption, transmit power of these IoT devices uh, such that these IoT devices can successfully transmit their data, which means that they, their uplink SINR needs to be satisfied. So under the condition of reliable communication, which means satisfying SINR for all the ground, user, all the ground devices, we need to minimize the total transmit power. So minimize the total transmit power while ensuring, ensuring reliable communication. That's why we're, called, we're calling this energy efficient and reliable Internet of Things communication. So 
Now, the, the question is, the goal is to minimize the total transfer of the IT devices while ensuring uh, SRNR thresholds and SNR requirements by optimally deploying these drones. So we need to find the best 3D deployment of drones as well as optimal association, which means that each uh, device should be assigned to which uh, UAV and what should be the transit power. So we have three unknowns, which are here. So the goal is to minimize the total transit power of PI, the transit power of IoT devices. This satisfied SINR constraint. So all the devices, their SINR should be satisfied. And what are the unknowns? Unknown is are the 3D uh, location of uh, drones. We have multiple drones here, inter uh, and we have interference, because we have too many IoT devices, and interference definitely exists. Uh, so C is the association, which says that uh, each uh, IoT should be connected to each drone. And P is the transmit power of the IoT devices. So all of these are affecting the <clears throat> performance and uh, the, actually the problem. Because uh, if all of the IoT devices use the ma their maximum transit power, we're going to have huge interference. So, so this cannot be satisfied. We cannot meet reliable communication. Uh, if IoT devices connect to very uh, far away uh, uh, drones, this is not going to work because uh, the total transfer significantly increases. And if the location of the drones are not optimized, again, uh, they may need to use lots of transit power. So that's why all of these uh, unknowns are affecting the total transit power of the IoT devices. Uh, and the goal is to find them, while ensuring the reliable communication and minimizing total power consumption. So by this, we, we, we eventually we say that each drone should be located where, each device should be connected to which UAV and use what transmit power. So that's the output. And by doing that, all of them can successfully transmit their data while using minimum transmit power. So this is a complex problem because uh, there is a mutual dependence between unknowns, so the location uh, if we change the location, association should change. If we change association, transit power should change. So all mutual dependence between the, all unknowns. So location, association, and transit power are mutually dependent. That's why it's, it's so complex. So we decompose the problem to two sub-problems, which are easier to solve. Now, here we cannot claim that these two are equivalent. Uh, they can be equivalent in some cases, but in general they are not equivalent, and this approach will not lead, will not necessarily lead to optimal solution, global optimal solution. But it's significantly more tractable than the original problem, uh, and shown that the optimality gap, like by simulation, uh, is not much. So. We decompose the problem to two sub problems. The first one is to fix association. And uh, so I, I'm assuming that association is given. I know which one is connecting to which one. The, and I'm trying to find the optimal 3D deployment of drones and transient power of the IoT devices. In the second sub problem, I'm fixing the location of the drones. I'm assuming the location of the drone is fixed. Now find the optimal association and uh, transmit power. And we do it iteratively. And this iteration will converge because it's decreasing and it's bounded from below. So because it's decreasing and it's bounded from below, it's going to converge. But I'm not claiming that it converges to global optimal. Uh, but each of these, uh, we can solve it uh, globally optimally. So we can give global optimal solution to each of these sub-problems separately. So the output of this one is association and transit power. The output of that one is location of drones and uh, transit power. Again, we do it iteratively. So this is just some 
again the result. It's, this shows the location of the drones. So these are the association between green or IoT devices are connected to green, blue to blue, and red to red, and with some certain transient power that satisfy the requirements. So this is just an illustrative result for the location of the drones and the association. So this somehow makes sense. For example, users are here which are, because they are more close to this one, they're going to connect to this one. So I mean, at least looks reasonable. Uh, and in the right figure shows the total transit power of IoT devices uh, as a function of number of UAVs. So as the number of UAVs increases, clearly the uh, IoT device energy consumption will decrease because on average they are more close uh, to, they're closer to the IoT devices because we have so many UAVs and they are, they are closer to the IoT devices and they can easily, they're, they're, they can easily collect their data. So the transfer power decreases. That's something we expected. And we compare with the case that uh, we have pre-deployed uh, UAVs. So in our case, we are considering the location of IoT devices and optimizing the location and association, everything. In a benchmark case, we are assuming that the location of the IoT the location of the drones are fixed. Now we do the association and all the forms. So we are not optimizing the locations. The location are fixed in a reasonable way. Uh, so this somehow shows the gain of optimizing the location. So by optimizing the location, we can significantly reduce the uh, energy consumption of and power consumption of the IoT devices. But even in the benchmark, the stationary case, I'm um, still optimizing the association and transit powers. This is just a gain of optimizing the location. Uh, and clearly, when the number of uh, UAVs increases, the gap decreases, which means that if you have too many UAVs, you don't need to really care about optimizing their locations. Just put them, because you have too many. Optimization of location of uh, drones will not help a lot. That would be. And in conclusion, as we saw, they have many advantages, UAVs, uh, connectivity, they can uh, enhance energy efficiency like in IoT, uh, they can be used for public safety and uh, temporary events. Challenges such as deployment, mobility, energy consumption, interference, resource management. And we need to also, while designing these UAV enables uh, wireless networks, we need to take into consideration some fundamental trade offs such as mobility and energy concern. If we move UAVs, uh, we can get some gain in some sense, but on the other side, uh, we are increasing the energy consumption of the drones. So while the mobility gives us some enhancement in uh, performance, uh, the energy consumption of the, the, the it, it requires more energy consumption for drones. So this is trade-off. More mobility, better performance for ground users, but uh, we're gonna, so this, this means that the drones can follow for uh, shorter time duration, which is not good, so this is a trade-off. And of course, there are other trade-offs also as well. And, uh, and clearly, we will have other technical problems to study, such as interference management, or backhaul, or even cases that uh, drones are, uh, are, are being used as users. So here, in all of my works so far, I'm considering uh, the use of drones as aerial base station. But some of the results can be extended to the case that we have a uh, drone as aerial users. But that requires also its own analysis. And thank you very much for your attention.